Hey folks, it's uh, Eugene here, and today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how you can calculate the slope of an embankment here. And what I have on screen is just a model that I made up. So this is not a real roadway, it's just a, a convenient model that I made and had a bit of fun making it uh, nonetheless. But it is a point cloud, so it's not a textured mesh. I actually turned this into a point cloud. If you go close enough, you'll see that it breaks apart into points. So. Uh, take it for what it is, but this would work the same no matter, you know, really if you had a model uh, from photogrammetry, whether it's a laser scanner point cloud or whether it's something with Recon 3D, whatever. Okay, this will work just the same. So what we're trying to do is calculate the slope of this embankment here or the other side, whatever it might be. And you can think of it like this. Let me go to an orthographic projection and I'll look at this from the front. Okay, so this is straight on and I'm looking at this in an orthographic view. So let me move over here. So let's assume that this is sort of the uh, horizontal, that there's a horizontal, an imaginary horizontal line running here. And you can see that there's some curvature here. So the slope down at the end here is a little bit greater than it is up here. Right? It's definitely different. But if we want, we can kind of find the average slope. If we pick a point here and pick a point there and then, you know, draw a straight line between it. So let's say, for example, I could draw a line. I'm going to draw a line, let's say, from about here to about here like that. Okay, and that'll be my average slope line. And what we want to do is we want to turn this into a two-dimensional triangle problem, a 90-degree triangle or a right-angle triangle. So I want to get this point here, drop a point down here, and then come across like this, something like that. This way we've got a 90-degree corner, and then we can just use sine, cos, and tan, and we can find these contained angles. Now, we could do the math actually just from the points that we pick from here and here by using the XYZ coordinates. But let's say that I just want to do it graphically or I just want to do it inside of Cloud Compare using the tools that I have here. Well, you could definitely do that. Okay. So again, if this is the horizontal, okay, a horizontal line like that, you would want to find the angle that's contained here, which is equal uh, to the angle that's inside this triangle. Okay. So Let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you how we start off. So what we're going to do is go back to a uh, perspective mode like this and I'm going to turn to the side. Okay. And I am going to use the point list picking tool. So that's this guy up here. Okay. So I'll just narrow in on this guy. When you pick this, it's almost like taking a virtual survey. So any point that I pick now, okay, it's going to give me the XYZ coordinates. So I'll pick something here like that and then I'll pick something somewhat in line or somewhat you know uh, that's straight across the roadway to it so let's say down here so now I've got point one and I've got point two and I've got their x y and z coordinates okay that works great for me so let's say I want to keep these here uh, there's a couple of things that I can do here. If you go to the drop down, you can actually export this as a text file and stuff like that. I can even turn in, turn it into a point cloud. And it's a kind of a measly point cloud with two points, but nonetheless, it's going to be useful to us. So I'm going to click on new cloud. Okay. And then I'm going to click on the check mark here. Go like that. So now I've got these two points that are here. And if I shut off this point cloud, right there, you see that I've got these two points. There's one there and there's one there. So what I'm going to do with these two points is I'm actually going to create labels for them. Okay. So that's this guy right here. I'm going to click on this picking list like that. And I'm going to click on this fourth one. So this one will add labels or dimensions and things like that. So I'm going to click on it. A menu will come up and there's this label. The first one is for labels. So I'm going to click on this point as best as I can. There we go. So I've got this guy here. That's one. And I'm going to save these, I'm going to save these coordinates here. So I'm just going to go save. And this is exactly what was in the uh, text file there, or the uh, pointless picking tool. But I want these on screen so you could see them all the time. So I'm going to save that one. So I got these 2D labels that are here. So that's great. I'm going to close this off. So these are going to remain on screen. Okay. So I know what my coordinates are. Now what I need to do is, let me, if I turn this back on, Okay, I want to make a third point, and that third point is going to be the right angle corner that's down here. So if you think about these two points here, I've got this one here, negative 13, negative 72, and 4.9, and point two is going to be negative 5, negative 71, 2.196. So let's look at the z coordinate. If I take this point here, 
And what I do is I drop it straight down so it's exactly at where the elevation of point number two is, I'm going to have myself a nice right angle triangle. So I need to create another marker or point or something at this location. And an easy way for me to do that would be to create something like a sphere or, you know, something like that. Well, if you didn't know this, Cloud Compare does have something which is called the Primitive Factory. So it's this guy right here, Primitive Factory, or you can go File and Primitive Factory. And here you go. We're into the Primitive Factory. And one of the options on the third tab is Sphere. So I'm going to click on Sphere. And it says, well, we can create a sphere. And what the nice thing here is that you can uh, define the radius. So let me, let me make this like a, a five centimeter radius or something like that. And then you've got XYZ coordinates. So I am going to take this, these numbers here. So I'm going to go uh, negative 13.542. Then I'm going to put in the next one, which is negative 72.091. And then the final one, I'm going to not use this one. I'm going to use this one, okay, the 2.196. So 2.196. And here is where this new point is going to be created. So I'm just going to go ahead and go create. And if I look down here, aha, we've got this little point right here. So it's actually, if I go in close, it's a little sphere. Okay, that's what that that is there. So I can close this now. I've got my sphere created here. And I can now use the measurement tool to create a uh, triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. Now for this, I'm going to shut off the main point cloud, which is this roadway cloud, so that I just see point one. I see point two and I see the corner point, okay, which is a sphere. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to go to the, this pointless pick, uh, excuse me, the point picking tool. And this time there's a distance tool here, but there's also this three points, um, measurement tool. Okay. So if I click on that, I'm going to click on this point. I'm going to click on this point and I'm going to click on the sphere. Now when I click on the sphere, it says, Hey, do you want to pick the center of the spheres going forward? And I'll say, yeah, that's fine. Just go yes. And now check this out. Look what I got. Okay, I've got this really, really informative label here. So it tells me that index A, index B, index C, and it gives me the angle at A, angle at B, and angle at C. Okay, it gives me the length of the components, you know, A to B and stuff like that, but I'm just interested in the angle. So let me turn this, um, I'm going to save this and close it, and I'm going to turn the roadway back on. So now I've got this triangle here, all right? And it's going to tell me what the slope of this embankment is here. And basically what I'm up against is I've got this 71 at A. That's right here. Okay. But I want to find out this angle. Okay. Which is actually going to be the angle at B. It's 18.747. So basically this line, if we were to look at the horizontal and then how far down it is, it's at um, 18.747. And that seems to make a lot of sense. And if you look at the angle at C, we're almost at 90, almost perfectly at 90, you know, 89.995. So this is a really simple way on how you can basically create uh, a triangle and then find out the slope of this embankment. Okay, that's it for this little video. If you're interested in more Cloud Compare videos, you can just go to my YouTube channel and I've got a bunch of stuff there that you can uh, sift through and hopefully, uh, you know, you'll find what you need. If you're looking for a tutorial that you think might be a good idea, hey, just leave some comments and uh, maybe I'll, I'll work one up for you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye-bye.